Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your Favorite Blockhead. This is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and MMA into one heck of an amazing podcast. You can find your favorite blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at yourfavoriteblockhead.com. Do me a huge favor and listen to Brian's show. You'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend. Now, as I said, let's get into today's topic. So my campaign to resurrect Yogi's shattered little ego and put it back together seems to be working. Do you bought some ego super glue on Amazon or what? No, I, I mean, I must be the ego super glue because all I'm doing is, you know, I have noticed him. Like, Brie loves to sit next to me on the couch. You know that. Right. She will cuddle into me and sleep on the couch. And I'll just instinctively pet her and pet her. I do it when Yogi lays on the extender of the couch. You know, whatever that thing is. The footrest. Footrest. And he lays there between my legs. I'll rub his back and I pet him. It's just instinct, you know? Uh-huh. But I notice him sometimes looking at me like all sad and depressed from over where you are. Yeah. And so I thought to myself recently, he must feel like I've replaced him with Bree because Bree is very needy, number one. She's a very needy dog. And she's very assertive about being needy. Meaning she's the dog that's <laughs> she like, knows what she wants and she I takes need her, it. I need your attention. Hello, you can't do anything else, please. And she just sits right in front of you and makes sure, you know, she'll drop a ball next to you. Seriously, I've never noticed to drop the ball. I don't see it. And then all of a sudden I look at her and I'm like, oh, isn't she cute? Wait, why is she staring at me? Like, if I move forward <laughs> or backwards by an inch, she moves and watches me. Like, uh-huh. she's watching me like a damn hawk that's hungry for food. And I'm the food. Like, that's how she's looking at me. And then all of a sudden I realize, oh, wait. And I reach by my leg. And sure enough, there's there's a ball ball. under your ass. Yep. I I mean, she's, then that's the difference. Yogi will like want to hang out with you. And so he'll like sit just outside your arm's reach because he wants you to have a little skin in the game. I'm, I figured this out about this yog dog. You've got to (laughs) have a little bit of skin in the game. If you don't have a little skin in the game, he ain't interested. So he sits like, if I can reach like three and a half feet out with, you know, extending my arm, my body, he sits like 3.51 feet away, just enough that I yeah. can't reach him. Like, and then I have to get up, get him. And then he likes that because right. hey, my daddy got up and picked me up. It was his choice. I didn't force myself on him. <laughs> so I realized like he doesn't get enough yogi time with you or me. And so keeping with the idea that you can only control your own actions and you can't control that of other people, nor should you ever want to try. I decided I would work on it myself and see what happened. And the dang dog has responded so positively that tonight he ran up here. He got on the bed. I called his blue fluffy toy, but it's like whatever's left. It's an elephant's ass of that elephant. Yeah, it's what's left. And he had it over here, and he was, like, growling and rough house playing. That's like what happened last night. Okay, last night, this dog, he comes to bed with the elephant's ass, and he gets in the bed, and then Bree wants the elephant's ass, so they're jumping up and down and up and down and up and down, and then Bree stole it from him. And then Yogi was all pissed off and whining oh, yeah, yeah, on your side of the bed, and you said, Oh, he's so cute, he's just going to sleep. And then so I took it away from Bree... You and then we sound like an idiot. The next thing I know, Yogi is sitting on the floor staring at me. And like oh, I can crazy. feel him staring at me. And it wakes like well, I wasn't 100% asleep, but it like made me open my eyes to find out what the fuck was going on. I looked down and there's this cute little derpy face staring away. So I reached out and I scratched his head and then no, and so I moved over so he could jump up on the bed. And I scratched his head. No, that didn't soothe him. So I was like, whatever. You go away. Uh, (laughs) 
And so I just left him alone. And then the next thing I know, he's trying to root around in my drawer to get the blue fluffy thing. So I just gave it to his ugly ass because I wanted him to go away. Yeah. Did it work? Yeah. He went under the bed and he chewed on it for a while. Huh. And then he went to sleep when he was so tired of playing. the reason why he slept under the bed the entire night. I he didn't, that. though. I asked you this morning if he slept under the bed the entire night. Well, that's and you true. Said, Around 3 no. a.m. he cuddled my legs. But then he got mad because I rolled onto my side. And he was, like, pissed that I wasn't letting him have it his way. I was doing it my way. Well, I'm the human. I get to do it my way, not him. He, he, like came, up, he came back up on the bed about 45 minutes after I gave do him the toy back. my way. 45 minutes is a long time, though, in a little dog life. But Well, that's how long he wanted to chew on the elephant's ass for. God knows what he did to that elephant's ass under the bed. You know, when you look at the dogs, dogs perfect. look at Bree. She's the youngest dog we have. She sleeps 12 hours a day at least. Uh-huh. Minimum. Minimum. Probably more. It's probably more like 16. Yeah, she sleeps a lot of the day. Yogi, he sleeps a little bit more than Bree. Uh-huh. Just a little bit more. He's like five times his, her age. His favorite thing to do is go behind the couch, Six go under the couch, age. and nap underneath the couch. Because nobody bothers him there. And he hangs out with Pretty Girl down there. Or he naps under Mitchell's bed. Yeah. Or he comes in here where it's cool and naps under the bed in here. Yeah, he kind of hides carefully. Yep. It's sort of cool. But I was thinking as you were talking about that, that... I can feel like your passion for the dogs, like, you know, and the animals in general. I can feel it and I see it on a regular basis. But like, what is it about our animals that they're so dang tied to their emotions? They're not just the dogs tied to their emotions. The cats don't give two shits about anything. Okay, we'll go with that. I'm fine with that. But both dogs 100% tied to their emotions dog thing it's not a dog thing no put it this way every dog i've ever had has been like that i've maybe it's my fault i've always said that dogs are smart always and i've always said that dogs also do the dumb thing of like something happens they forget about it and they come back and they love you again they're the only like the guy said they're the only animal that will love you a hundred percent unconditionally without asking for anything back is a dog Uh uh-huh and our two dogs though are like completely 100 percent connected to their emotions like i said i'm petting brie so yogi is butthurt yeah that's kind of stupid on it to the point where i have to give him extra attention and by the way for those of you who are going to be mean and comment and say oh you took time away from brie poor brie Did I say that? This is why I constantly harp on not assuming. It's more like he took time away from sleeping to pet Yogda. Yes. Also, maybe the cats aren't completely heartless because Miss O feels the same way as Yogi. She's feeling neglected. I tried to tell you this, and I was told, cats don't give a damn what you think. That was what you just said. She's feeling neglected by me specifically. Nobody else. She gives no shits about the rest of you. I think Yogi feels neglected by you specifically, too. Why? Yogi sat on my lap while I worked for an hour and a half today. Well, maybe he feels better today, but maybe up until today, he felt neglected by you. Yogi sits on my lap while I work like three times a week. Maybe it was your fault. That's why he was depressed. I am burning six holes in your eyes. You with made my him eyes. depressed. No, I didn't. By ignoring him. Uh-huh, sure, okay. Poor Yogi. Uh-huh. Can't believe you. Uh-huh. <sighs> I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt this time. But if Yogi uh-huh. tells me again that he feels ignored. I'm it's clearly know. your fault. I'm going to know. Well, I'm fixing it. I owned it. Like I said, I don't try to control what you do or do not do. I control what I do, and anyway, I'm fixing it with that Give Miss O a little extra attention, too. And he loves it. Also, I took a really cute picture of Miss O earlier. She was sleeping on your pillow. Yes. That I sent to you. And like two minutes, and I was like laying here, just taking a break. And like two minutes later, fucking Jasmine comes trotting over and assaults Miss O. And then I pushed him <laughs> off the bed, so she was happy. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you lunatics all of them it's like this is kind of turned into a zoo update 
the last thing, you know, I'm going to kind of switch subjects here and bring it home, but I got to tell you what happened on Twitter. So like <laughs> I follow this guy for a long, long time and we've chatted on and off at different times. And so he's kind of a friend and I saw somebody basically say, um, you know, I'll be sitting here waiting for you to come to my house so I can kick your ass. And I responded, ha, 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 um, more like Mark would kick your ass. And I said, hell, I'm old, and even I could kick your ass. And I got put in Twitter jail because I threatened bodily harm against somebody. <laughs> Where I did not threaten bodily harm. I said he could kick your ass, and I could kick your ass. I did not say... Give me your address. He's I'm coming going to your house. To come kick your ass, and I'm coming with him. Okay. Where's your address or okay. any of that? And that's the thing. We have. I'm going to say the word, and we're going to have to remember to put an e on this one. But what what happened to this society that we're so pussified? Anyway, now that you've used the word I dislike, um. <laughs> Well, I'm certainly not going to use the other word that you don't mind that 99% of our female listeners will despise. No, not going to. Well, that one doesn't really mean the same thing anyway. Um, but it's true Any, also, but for a different reason. Anyway, I, during the initial set of riots, got into a disagreement with somebody about looters at the Long Beach Town Center. Because, you know, the news had pictures of them and video of them looting the Long Beach Town Center. And this dumbass decided to tell me that there was no looters at the Long Beach Town Center and that she was all pissed off because Walmart had their door barricaded with carts. And she threatened to come to where I was and kick my ass and she didn't get muted. Exactly. It's because they rely on artificial intelligence to do this. Do I need to, like, report shit like that to get dumbasses put in Twitter jail? Like, what is happening? Do you realize, though, how scary it is that artificial intelligence is some people? Like, for me, it happened, and I was like, okay, whatever. I don't really care. Like, I'll admit, I think I was addicted to Facebook. Okay. I do. I think I was addicted to it. It was like it gave me kind of a rush like drugs and now that i don't do it and i stay away the rest of it doesn't matter to me so like when they cut this so they shut me off for 12 hours whatever who cares but it's funny it just makes me laugh because the guy literally said i'll be waiting here at my house you mr blah 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 so i can kick your ass that guy didn't get put in jail (laughs) but i did exactly and these ai things are just scary because they don't they're not ready to do this but for some people that's where i was going before and now i remember for some people they would go ape crap about that like they would their life would end oh my god what am i gonna do twitter shut my account down for 12 hours what am i what the hell am i gonna do i know right they would just lose what am their I gonna do? Shit. i was just like after like the first time i checked honestly was an hour and a half before the thing was over and i was like has it been 12 hours yet and i checked <laughs> it and i mean like and it didn't matter to me and you know it's funny that's the funny thing about twitter sometimes i'll open it and i'll be like oh my god there's like 27 um notifications for things that i've been involved in you know tweets i've been involved in or mentioned in oh my god and then i look and i realize yeah it's because you haven't been on the damn twitter for three days <laughs> i just don't care anymore about that stuff and that's great. It's really freeing. And now I've kind you of, go on Instagram. I've kind of looked at your situation in a different light. I used to think you were addicted to it as well, but I don't think you're addicted to it. I think you could literally walk away tomorrow and I don't think you'd even look back and care. Facebook? I really don't. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just go on Facebook to connect with people that I don't get to see because they live in Canada. Uh huh. That's about it. Hmm. And I then agree. I find some funny but yet things. Those same people have an Instagram, so you don't really need Facebook for that. I don't like Instagram, so because that's because you, like I said, you make a conscious decision. You enjoy it. Uh-huh. That's what I said. I mean, that's exactly what I said. I still think. Also, though, my mother is incapable of using Instagram, but so I you're still not even think right. you would walk away tomorrow if you if you had to and not look back and not even care. I do. Yeah, I believe that. And that's different than me. I had to actually like 
make a solid effort. Now I'm at the point where I can go in there and if I see someone say something stupid, I can say something to them and then I can go away for a while and not be sucked in day after day after day after day after day after day. And quite honestly, that one time when it was like, what, a two day discussion that irritated the hell out of me. I didn't want to be there. You got sucked right back in, though, when it was a long discussion. So maybe you were addicted a little bit to Facebook. Yeah, but this time I knew and I was like, nope, pull back. Well, now that we've berated the social media platforms. Yeah, you know what, though? I think that it's kind of sad now how they've scared everybody with this COVID stuff because I don't think social interaction is ever going to go back to the way it was. Well, I hope you're wrong. But I also think it might not be such a terrible thing because we kind of are mimicking the Japanese culture and they're like the most um, social group of people I've ever been around. Like they're always having a party with their family or they're going somewhere with their friends and they do things in groups of people. And it's like just normal. Whereas for us, we would think, Oh, well, we only want to invite this couple because you don't want to invite like 16 people because it makes you uncomfortable. But yeah, they're so social that they just do it. And yet they have social distancing built into their culture, masks built into their culture, et cetera. And I think that's the direction we're going. And it's sad because I don't think we know how to be like the Japanese. And be well, social. then we'll be moving somewhere that's less retarded. How about that? Well, let's hope. Let's hope you're right. And it's just geography. Yep. Otherwise, I'm going to build a rocket and I'm going to go live on the moon. Maybe we'll have to do that. We'll see. All avenues are open, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and we, you guys think we're kidding. We mean all avenues are open. Yeah. When it comes to getting out of here, any means of transportation out of here, we're willing to consider. And on that beautifully pessimistic note, good night, everyone. Hasta la bye bye. Maybe forever. Thank you for listening to the Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.